Hello everyone, welcome back to Office 365 Administrator course. Today we are going to talk about admin section. So let's go to our portal and we are going to go ahead and scroll down. So the first thing is exchange and what are you going to do in exchange? Let me scroll this little down so you guys can see. So this is what you will see and in my experience you probably going to be working in this section also it's a lot of work over here because it deals with a lot of mail stuff exchange all mail so mailbox is the first one let's click on that and what are you going to get with that so as you guys can see when you click on the mail you have few options on the top you have groups you have resources uh, and then you have contacts here and you have shared this is something that we went through in the beginning and remember we created a shared a shared mailbox and you have migration this is where you can see your uh, emails migra being migrated from your server to here to cloud you could see the status here um, you can migrate to exchange online you can migrate from exchange online so this is something that we're not going to touch this but this is where you will see the synced files and everything so let's go to mail and daily life in IT if you're working as a help desk or IT support you're probably going to come over here sometime and maybe you'll click on one of the person over here and you'll see something you know something is not working or maybe you want to disable something like email connectivity for a person for a limited time because you're dealing with some problem or maybe that person left something like that um, you could play around with these settings um, not I mean a production environment you don't want to play around with it but just like in testing you could do things like that you could convert it to the share mailbox like you know if so let's say for example someone leaves the company you take the license off what do you do with their emails you could convert the, their emails to share mailbox if that was something that other people need to share like say you have three other users that are new and you had one person who were really good he left the company but he has a lot of emails and there's some a lot of examples that people can uh, kind of like learn from it so you probably do this type of things depending on the policies and things like that from the company but you could do these so then what you have here let's go back to the dashboard you have the same thing it basically shows in this format before it was like an all in one line permissions admin roles let's click on that and then we'll see what admin roles does so you know you can add people as an administrator so if let's say for example this is a compliance management as you can see this person whoever this person is going to be in this group you will see that they will have these roles so if I click on help desk the roles pretty much drop down to reset passwords and like I said it's, it's up to companies how much uh, a help desk person can have access or an IT support it's totally up to the managers and whoever is the main person to decide who would get what type of roles and you could see you can just take the whole roles off and things like that these were going to be all your power users and sometimes even uh, maybe service accounts can also have something to do with this user roles um, as you guys can see there's really not much into this you can add default user roles assignment policies um, Outlook web app policies if there's a web app what do you do what do you want the app web app to be um, basically given out so you can see enable feature right here uh, all these features you guys should look into it and see what it can do organization so this will be basically overall policy for what can people share outside of your company as you can see right here individual sharing allow users to share calendar information and contacts with external organization and you guys can click on learn more um, protection malware filter connection filter and quarantine is something that if you guys want to see what's being done you will see it right here um, and let's say for example one day if you come over here and you see something like that's supposed to be a good email address and that really happens with Microsoft they might not know that this is a good email and it came over here then there's a way to get it back to their the user email and this is something that other people will be checking on their 
uh, emails also they'll have a link they might not see all these other features but they will see their spam filter and things like that in their um, in their basically mailbox Mailflow is pretty much like you're trying to figure out things let's say for example you put a rule in here that anything with zip file or zip folder uh, it hits your email or it, this type of file hits your email block it you could put all these rules right here you can create a new rule um, you can uh, pick some of the things that is already in there you can modify a message you can restrict managers and their direct reports you can do things right here that pretty much defines how your emails are gonna flow to your organization so if there are if you don't want certain type of emails coming to your organization you can create a rule over here that I don't want these type of emails period and you'll they'll just block it you could do message trace this is going to be another important one if you have this situation where a user will call you and say hey you know what this person is calling me from this university or this place or that place and this is the email address and it's getting blocked uh, I'm not getting it and they're saying they are hundred percent sure they sent you the message so there's a possibility that either it went to spam or either it got blocked by one of your rules so you need to check that what's going on here you probably need to check the message ID if you don't have that you put a sender email address that you can ask your user to send the whole forward the email address that they think that they send it to you uh, and maybe that email had an attachment and they can send the other emails without attachment so you'll put their email address here you will put your recipient address here and then when you do search you'll see what's going on between the emails so if without a search I just do search I will see some of the emails that's going back and forth and it says right here delivered some of them might say is not delivered or whatever message you will get if you double click on this you'll get more more uh, detail so it will tell you the IP address of where is it coming from it'll tell you what's the status of the message sometimes it might say blocked and the reason will be given that this is why it got blocked and it will tell you exactly what rule is blocking it so it kinda give you a very sometimes it's kinda hard because some people might be spamming your system through other um, systems and it's really hard to find out so yeah this is really important tool that you guys should master and play around with these things and send the email out see if you can create a rule over here see if you can block it see what kind of message you will get and things like that that will kind of give you guys more confidence on the on playing around with these things and and when you get a call it'll be easy for you to just go back and uh, figure it out mobile section um, this is something that we talked in earlier so basically you guys can do little like you know if someone is connected to their mobile you can do a lot of things like you can do exchange active sync access settings allow synchronizations you haven't selected administrator so basically you can do a lot of things with mobile stuff over here um, if you have uh, this policy turned on now most of the places it really depends on how um, how heavy they use these mobile settings on their phones usually they will use another tool or um, or maybe some other system that kind of uh, control your mobile stuff but this is another ability from Microsoft Office 365 that you guys can do public folder is another important one this is somewhere everyone can access and either from portal or from your um, outlook so this is let's say this is my public folder and anyone can access this and drop folder files in it in your organization so you could create something like this um, yeah so basically I'm not able to do this because this is not a live um, license so what what you guys can do this is used for like you know if you're if you go to your portal you can also access the public folder a lot of people use this for different purposes some people might use it for resume some people use it for you know sharing documents between each other and you can do um, you can know root permissions and stuff like that who is the main person you can give that person a root permission over here that will be the person that can add other people and then you can specifically when you add a folder here public folder you can go by folders and whoever gets permission maybe departments you guys can use it 
any ways you want it it's pretty cool feature um unified messaging would be more of the you know for phones and how to connect two things Cisco sometimes you might want to use that uh, and you'll have to do a little bit of research on this how to connect um, your voicemails and all that together once you get like somebody call you and then you get a voicemail so that's going to be it for our Office 365 administrator course hopefully we will be creating another course that's going to be kind of a little more technical than this uh, it probably will uh, involve some of the things like PowerShell settings and how to connect and give out and do bulk kind of things that's gonna be more uh, technical course than this now in the next video we will jump into troubleshooting and how to troubleshoot OneDrive type of issues with other users